Please stand as we sing together number 722 for all the saints, number 722. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. Well, welcome everybody, those who remembered Mass is 1030, not 1130, and then those who set their clocks back to get here at 1030 and not, I don't know what time. Um, <laughs> anyway, you're here. Um, but the wonderful thing is there are thousands, thousands, millions of other people who are here, this communion of saints, the people all still living, the people who have died, who have gone before us, those you know and love, those you never met from 1,500 years ago. We're all here in this celebration of the Eucharist. So let's just really get strength in that. And just now to begin praying, we remain faithful to the communion and faithful to the mercy of God that formed it. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come to us this morning in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest. Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated. Oh, 
us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you've promised. We ask it through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so let us be seated and let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, Fear the Lord your God and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments, which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today, the word of the Lord.
The second reading this morning is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priest, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. strength of your word send us to be your disciples to bring all the world to the joy of your kingdom from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying he is one And there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Every time we say uh, the Apostles' Creed, whether it's at Mass or if we're saying the Rosary, every time we say it, we profess, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And the wonderful thing is that we celebrated all these mysteries just this past Friday and Saturday. I know not everybody was able to come to church. The Feast of the All Saints on Friday and then the commemoration of all the holy souls on Saturday. And the thing is so wonderful is that in this part of the world, the leaves may be almost all gone from the trees and the light's getting shorter. But for us, for us, this living, pulsating communion of everyone who was ever baptized into Jesus and all those who died in the Lord, this pulsating communion shines on all the time, and we especially feel it in these days. Those who have lived and died in the Lord interact, interact with us still, and especially with, with family, with dear ones. They behold God face to face, and yet they always have an eye and their hearts toward you, toward me. There's a beautiful uh, Eskimo Indian saying that um, talks about those who have gone before us and, and the stars. And it goes this way. Perhaps they are not stars in the sky. Perhaps they are not stars in the sky, but rather openings where the love of our lost ones shines down to let us know they're happy. The first time I saw it, I fell in love with that. And still, whenever I see stars, I think of that. Perhaps they're not stars, but openings in the sky where the love of our lost ones shines down to let us know they are happy. But the thing is, how did such an immense crowd of, of witnesses, of the redeemed, the resurrected, just ordinary people like us, how did that come about so big? How does it get so big? And there's where I think we have to look at this morning's gospel. This is from St. Mark. It's, we're there now. And in this gospel, a Jewish scribe, a lawyer, asks Jesus, which is the greatest commandment? And with all the different ones in Judaism, Jesus responds with this Shema Yisrael. That's a prayer the Jewish people say every day still. And Jesus just says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Real love is in deeds, in actions, and not just in sentiments or word. And Jesus says that. But then Jesus marches right on. The second is like this. The second commandment is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So now we have real, genuine love of others right up there with the love of God. And this is, this is pretty new. There's a hint of it toward the end of the Old Testament, but this is really new. But then, what I want to kind of say is this. That's how St. Mark tells this story. St. Luke has the same story. The scribe comes and asks the question, Jesus answered. But that scribe, in that version, wants to kind of look smarter than Jesus. So Jesus is talking about love your neighbor, so this guy pops up, and who is my neighbor? Ba ba ba. And he gets his money's worth because Jesus answers right then with the parable of the Good Samaritan. And so here you have this story of just an ordinary, hated, no good Samaritan, total stranger on the road who sees the victim of robbers, who stops, who cares, who provides practical treatment even looks to the future of the victim. Who is my neighbor that I must love as much as I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind and strength? 
And Jesus is saying, everyone, everyone who crosses my path, everyone who needs some love or as much love as I can give, as I can actually give at this moment with my resources, with my limits, but with no limit as to who is my neighbor. I may not have the resources, but my neighbor is without limits. Not just my flesh and blood, not just those who live in my town, my school, my political party, my church, my country, all are neighbor to me. And I am called to be neighbor to all. And that's why the holy ones, this communion of saints, can be so immense. Because in this wonderful passage from the feast day of all saints from the book of Revelations, John says, after this I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands and they cried out in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. Dear hearts, our own fears and prejudices, our own lack sometimes of broader knowledge and experiences of people who are different from us, our own sinfulness, wants us to put limits on who is my neighbor. And ultimately, that would put limits on how great would be the multitude of those in heaven. And that's not our role. That's not our role as servants of God, as disciples of Jesus. For if you are close to God, your love must spill over to others. And the closer to God you get, the more your love has to spill out to more and more people. And how hard that is, especially perhaps in this day and age, how hard with all the contrary voices and speakers going against this message, going against what Jesus is saying. And so I come back again, perhaps to that Eskimo prayer, that maybe our own loved ones in the communion of saints, our loved ones who are already with God, that maybe they could shine down on us like stars and whisper to us how to walk, how to love, how to be neighbor to all. So shall we rise and with all these Christians who gather this Sunday, profess our faith, we'll pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in a Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And so let us pray then for the church that we may sincerely seek to love both God and others so that the reign of God may draw near. We pray to the Lord. For the gift of peace for our children and our children's children, that a love based on justice multiply greatly in this and in every land, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> for an end to all disputes based on religious issues and observances, that believers may see that love is more important than offerings and sacrifices. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all new and expectant parents, that God will give them the wisdom in caring for and nurturing their children, sharing their faith with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are suffering, that God will guide those living in areas of war to safety, give strength and hope to those recovering from natural disasters and send his healing spirit to all who have been tortured or abused. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in conflict, that God will open communication within families and help everyone to listen to each other, restore trust, in each person's heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for safe and accurate voting, that God will give wisdom and insight to each person and help each person take their responsibility seriously. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> and as always, we pray for the sick, for you yourself, if you're not well, those recovering from surgery, awaiting tests. We pray for Joanne Cimino, Linda, for Dan, that we may generously assist them by offering encouragement and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died, particularly our families, our friends whose names have been inscribed here on the altar for the month of November. The Mass is offered for Ruth Schmiedel and for John Frazier. We pray that they may all live in the light and peace of God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We've been asked to pray too for Alice Williams and for Nadine Whalen, and then in silence for the people closest to your own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, grant us the grace to listen, that our hearts and minds and our senses may be open to receive the word that saves, the gospel of Jesus our eternal high priest, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated, everyone. And, um, all the lucky ones in the front row find the wicker baskets. Perhaps they could start to pass them back. And As always, we thank you for your generosity. It really, really helps.
brothers and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us an outpouring of your mercy. We ask it through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ the Lord, for by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as our mediator. And he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your son, you gather women and men whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross, signed by the seal of the Spirit. And therefore now, and for ages unending, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, most merciful Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing and broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, and then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim in song the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Christopher, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let all the daughters and sons of God pray to do his will on earth so as to be happy with him forever in heaven. Let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And we share some sign of that peace. Sins of the world.
sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of the Lord keep us all together unto everlasting life. I just wanted to say, if you don't know, for the reception of Holy Communion, if you just stay in your places and we'll come to you section by section. If you have any trouble walking, raise your hand at the end. We can come. And we will be come outside also to the folks there so you don't have to go. Our first communion song is number 449, For You Are My God, number 449. to me. 
song is number 597. I want to walk as a child of the light. Number 597. I want 
You are one God. And besides you, there is no other. You alone are we to love with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. Sharpen our ears to hear this great commandment. Arouse our hearts to offer this twofold love. And we ask it through the Christ who was, who is, and who is to come, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for and ever. Oh, I have so much to say. <laughs> Let's see. I have lots of papers here. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to all of the tag sale volunteers who worked very hard. Um, they managed to raise more than $15,000 in, in just four days. So thank you, thank you, thank you all of you who were involved in that, all of you who donated treasures, and all of you who bought treasures and brought them home. So thanks. Um, there is an event going on this coming Saturday for the benefit of the Torrington Soup Kitchen, the community soup kitchen. It's called Rock the, Ch Rock the Kitchen. Rock the Kitchen. It's music and food and various other things. Um, so there are flyers in the back on the side and over there by the side door. Um, so donation for of fifteen thousand dollars to to participate. What? Um, fifteen thousand dollars to participate? <laughs> <laughs> Come there on, you, you have that much money. <laughs> fifteen dollars. Oh. Fifteen dollars. I have. I'm th still thinking of the uh, tag sale. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> $15 uh, is the admission. It benefits the soup kitchen. Pick up a flyer and go on Saturday. Um, lectors. We're looking for lectors for November and December. If you want to sign up, I have a sign-up sheet here. Also, we have the new uh, lector books for the new year. So if you want to come and pick one up, um, those of you who are lectors, those of you who want to be lectors, um, just pick one up, they're up here, and just sign the, the page saying that you took one, okay? Um, Thanksgiving is coming. Uh, why bake your Thanksgiving pies when Lori and the um, gift shop elves, the, the, I'm not thinking right today, the, caf, <laughs> the cafe elves, um, they could do it for you. So um, if you'd like to order pies, you can do it online. You can do it at the gift shop. Um, if you're ordering six or more pies, if you really want a lot of pies, then call our office and we'll take the order by phone. Um, you can pay online. If you don't want to put your credit card number down online, don't worry about it. There's a form you can fill out and we'll call you. Sister Ann will call you um, and get your credit card information. So that's Thanksgiving pies. Um, you may notice that we have some fresh paving out here, um, thanks to the help of a lot of people. We meant we really want to pave uh, behind Pilgrim Hall to add some more parking spaces and pave the access road, but we don't have the money to do that. So that'll be a project for next year. And if you want to help us do that, and you haven't signed up to be a friend of the shrine, there are... Um, packets on the side and by the side door. Um, you'll help us um, raise enough money to do that and other projects. Um, we need to raise another $35,000 by the end of the year. As I said, if we don't, you'll see me out on the street corner selling brownies and cookies mm -hmm. with a very forlorn look on my face. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't signed up yet, feel free to do that. Um, the gift shop is open today. If you go over there, you'll see that Prime Time is setting up their holiday pop-up shop. Um, 
They have wonderful things. I think it begins in the middle of the month. Um, you'll see all of the preparations going on. Um, also, Advent is coming up soon, right after Thanksgiving. We're having an Advent retreat day on December 14th. It's a Saturday. Um, if you'd like to um, be a part of that, you can reserve a space online or you can call the office. Um, there are a limited number of spaces, so reserve early. And I think that's it. Thank you. Aren't you glad you were sitting down while all this is going on? <laughs> <laughs> but now let it rise. The Lord be with you. And, with your and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our recessional song is number... I forgot something. Um, so if you haven't already filled out um, the names of your beloved dead, you can do that throughout the month and we'll place them on the altar here. Also, we have our Book of the Dead here on the altar. Um, the, these are for people who have died in the past year. So if you have people that, you know, some of your people have died recently, you can write their names in the Book of the Dead. Thank <coughs> you. Now we can okay. sing. All right. <laughs> our recessional song is number 447. How Can I Keep From Singing? Number 447. <laughs> My life flows on in endless song Above this lamentation line I hear the real, the far-off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm But to that rock I'm clinging Okay.